Good morning. And welcome to St. John. It is great to be here with you and happy Reformation Sunday. It's, uh, it's great. And uh, good morning, Pastor Jeff. Happy good Reformation morning Sunday. Good morning Pastor Mark. Yeah, Reformation Sunday. Today, you will hear all the songs that you all are singing have been written by Martin Luther. The choir singing a piece that's an ode to Martin Luther, I guess you might say, but really uh, praising God for the theme of grace. But all the songs that we as a, a congregation are singing today by written by him. So good stuff. Yeah. Do have a couple announcements for you, one of which uh, um, on the back of your essentials card, the very top thing is a quiet morning with God. And we've got a quick one minute video to take a look at that. Hi, St. John's family. I'm Cecilia Farron, and I'm a working mom raising three amazing and active girls. And you can imagine our schedule is packed, but I'm here to tell you why I intentionally make time to attend our quiet mornings with God. It is through this ministry that I have learned prayer, prayer techniques that have taken me to the feet of Abba the Father. I have found mature believers who are walking alongside me as God is healing me. And my spiritual maturity, my ability to live by faith increases exponentially every time I'm able to attend a quiet morning with God. So won't you please give it a try with us? Join us November 5th in the high school youth room and come experience the love of God with us. I look forward to seeing you there. All right, so that's a wonderful uh, event coming up. Also, I want to mention our blood drive is coming up. It's the day after, which is November 6th. So the date there is wrong just to see if you're paying attention. But the date on the essentials card is correct. So it's on the 6th. So look forward to that. Yeah, awesome. Just want to let you know that at the 11 o'clock service today, we're going to be receiving new members. We will be receiving 37 new members into our congregation, which is awesome. Yes, praise the Lord. And even better than that, one of the families, the dad and his two girls are going to be baptized. And then we're going to receive them into membership. So that's just going to be a really special time for that family and for our church. So I just want to let you know. And then... Um, uh, so just take a moment, if you wouldn't mind, please take that connection card from the pew rack in front of you, fill that out, throw that in the offering plate at the appropriate time. We'd love to know that you were here this morning with us. Let's rise now and greet each other in the name of the Lord. I'm happy to see you.
make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a moment now and reflect on our need for God's grace and mercy. Let us now confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. And we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. And we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now as we bring our offerings forward, placing them in the different places, the offering plates located around our worship center. And we sing our hymn of praise, Salvation Unto Us Has Come. Please be seated for our time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning rejoicing in the many blessings you give us in life, celebrations that we have in the, as a congregation today on this Reformation Sunday where we remember some 500 years ago that the spark of the Reformation where the gospel of Jesus Christ was uncovered made known again 
brought to light. And so we thank you, Lord, for the many reformers, Martin Luther and the others, who diligently and faithfully and courageously stood against the powers that tried to squash that message. And we're grateful that we can continue to stand strong and rejoice and proclaim that wonderful good news that salvation has come to us fully in your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the cross, the forgiveness of sins, the empty tomb and that resurrection and life everlasting. Lord, we're also grateful for the many blessings in our family and these flowers today are given uh, by Mark and Jean Freilich for their granddaughter, Adeline's uh, seventh birthday coming up on the 2nd of November. Lord, we're also thankful for the baptisms that'll be happening later this morning for Jared and Evelyn and Haley. We're also thankful for the 37 new members joining our congregation this morning. We rejoice and pray that you continue to strengthen them in faith and help them to build relationships here. Lord, in your mercy, and for those who are in need of healing, Father, we ask that you bless uh, Scott and Katie and Shirley and Clara, for Pat and Pete and W.C., Duncan, uh, Carl and Doris, Diana, Lisa and Mike, Mike and Connie and Owen, for Carla and Chris, and James and Rhonda, Norman, Wayne, Janice and Mary, for Jack and Donna, for Margaret, Douglas, Millie. Lord, we also lift up special requests for Elise Garrett's surgery coming up. We pray for the operating room time to be scheduled and all the preparations and the staff that can be scheduled. And we keep ask you to be in all the details there. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, for protection and guidance and other needs for Carolyn and Bob and Judy Avery and for Holly and Owen. And Owen who's facing open heart surgery. For Jackie who faces bypass surgery. Lord, we lift up Kylie and Janice Nancy and Elmer and Ruth, Pastor Schultz. Lord, we also ask that you bless those who grieve. Be with the family of Judy Volick and the family of William Calbo. For the family of Lynn Fortier, who is the daughter of Clara Demereau. And Lord, we also lift up the family of Della Heckman, who passed away earlier this week. Lord, in your mercy. For ministry efforts like Cypress Chapel, Defenders of the Faith, for Cypress, for uh, LifeBridge, and other ministries of our Texas district, here in our Circuit 38 and throughout the Synod, we ask you to continue to strengthen and bless them. Lord, we're thankful for the gift of music, for hymns that were written hundreds of years ago, but also songs written today proclaim that message. We pray that these songs can be used also as an outreach tool to touch hearts, strengthen lives. Lord, bless those who are in our congregation in the different classes and training, whether it be Stephen Ministry or people in our LWML, and those who are, are serving in very meaningful ways. We ask, Lord, that you are also blessing our government be with our election process these next couple weeks. We ask that you are with our nation and that an honest uh, election that's, that is, uh, is beneficial for our country happens. Lord, may whoever gets elected, may we be supportive. May it be used to proclaim your goodness. May it be for your, your will. We lift all these prayers up to you, Heavenly Father, in the precious and powerful name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
The first reading this morning is from Romans chapter 3, beginning with the 19th verse. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God 
through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded by what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 14, beginning at the sixth verse. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an e eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 23rd chapter. This text is the basis of Pastor Mark's sermon today, and we have Jesus saying some pretty strong words. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides, straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate, that the outside also may be clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. This is the gospel of the Lord. now profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Life lasting. Amen. Please be seated. And at this time, I invite the children to come up for a brief children's message. Can 
I, I'm going to start handing, the, can you help me, you're a big kid, right? You're pretty responsible. Can you help me by handing out a few of these to those sitting around you? Just go ahead and hand them out, and then I'm going to give one for you, and one for you, and I'm going to give one, two, three. Can you take these and hand them to the girls right behind you? And then here is a couple for you right there. And here's a few for you down there. All right. I think everybody's going to have one today. And if oh, we got one extra, and that's for her, but she, the bashful girl sitting back there. So, all right. That's right. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Now, today's a very special day. Did you notice something that changed in our worship center? Did you notice anything that changed? Yeah? What's that? It used to be green. Red. Very good. It used to be green, and it's been green for such a long time. That big light behind the cross, now it's red. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yep. We have red pyramids. We got the red stole. See, on the back, it's green. I can just flip it over, wear it for red. That's right. That's right. And so it's a special day. We, uh, we're celebrating what we call Reformation Sunday. Now, you might think we're celebrating the fact that Miss Nicole won the candy contest and had to dress up like a pumpkin. And as you see, she's dressed up like a pumpkin because that was that competition that her and Alex did. But she's not dressed up as a pumpkin for Reformation, right? But there is a celebration going on, and we're singing great songs. The choir and the handbells had beautiful music. And there's, we're celebrating because as... Mr. Ludwig just read, he said, he talked about us becoming God's children because of a gift. God did this as a gift. Who likes getting gifts? I like getting gifts, yeah. We get gifts at Christmas or at birthdays. Yeah, sometimes we get gifts for no special reason, just because someone loves us and appreciates us and we get a gift. And that's wonderful. Well, Martin Luther understood. He, Martin Luther is a man who lives some 500 years ago, a long time ago. Yeah, you know who he is, right? And so he understood that God's love found in Jesus is a gift. And so he designed this drawing. He made this drawing. You see this on your paper? It's got the hearts there. And what's in the middle of that red heart? What is it? It's a cross, yeah. And so in the middle of his drawing, he made a cross because, at, and it's right in the middle of the heart. So Martin Luther was wanting us to know that in our hearts, Jesus is center. It's the most important thing in our hearts. That when Jesus died on the cross, and he made, he forgives us of our sins, and he did that as a gift for us. And Martin Luther understood that. And he wants us to know that too. And we celebrate that here at St. John. That's the most important thing. That's why the cross is so big up there. Because we want to make sure everybody knows that Jesus died on the cross to forgive us. And that makes us God's children. And that's a wonderful thing. And then he also drew a beautiful white rose around the heart. That's a white rose. Talking about the purity that we have in Christ, that we are pure and forgiveness. So when we're forgiven, we're made pure. And then there's a blue background, like a blue sky. And that's a beautiful aspect of God's creation. And then you see that color, the circle all the way around it. What color is that? Yellow. yellow. And it, it's supposed to be kind of like a yellowish gold, kind of like your outfit here, your bow right there. That's, Martin Luther said that symbolizes heaven. And that God's love is never ending in this life as well as in the life to come. So Martin Luther drew this picture. It's called Luther's seal or Luther's rose. And you might see this a lot in our, in our church. It's on our LWML cookbook. If your parents have an LWML cookbook from 20 years ago, that is an awesome cookbook. And it's right there. It's in our hymnal. If you pull out a hymnal in the, in the pew rack, you'll find Luther's seal. You can find it in lots of different places. a house that you had for a long time. Was that yeah, too? maybe so, maybe so. And so what I have down here is, well, this part right here, your parents can read this 
if you're not a good reader yet, and it helps explain it. But down here, you can draw Luther's rose, maybe during Pastor Mark's sermon, you're listening to him, but you can also draw down here, or you can draw your own image of God's love. Maybe you want to draw a cross, maybe you want to draw a picture of heaven, or your family going to church. Lots of things can remind us of God's gift in Jesus. So let us pray and thank him for this gift. Dear God, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, that he's in our heart and he forgives us. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, you can take your sheets back with you. You can keep it, that's for you.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, we are still in our series, Keeping It Real, and we're celebrating Reformation Sunday. Now, if you are new to St. John, maybe you're new to Lutheranism in general, eh, Reformation Sunday is kind of a big deal to us, as you can tell, right? And, 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 and so it is, it, is our, um, it, is, it is our thing to celebrate one Sunday a year the life and work of Martin Luther, who was a monk who lived in the 16th century and spearheaded the Reformation. And so it is our tradition to celebrate Reformation Sunday on the last Sunday of October each year. Now, if you're tracking in our series, Keeping It Real, you know that in this series we're talking about making sure that religious traditions don't get in the way of worshiping Jesus from the heart. So you may be thinking, well, then this is kind of a strange thing to be celebrating a tradition that's not even actually in the Bible during a series like this, but actually it's very appropriate. See, because Martin Luther, what he was famous for, what he was all about was getting rid of traditions that got in the way of worshiping Jesus from the heart. See, it, when, when Luther was alive, uh, church people, church leaders, the Pope, had instituted all these new traditions and religious rituals and rules and forms that everybody had to follow, and it became like a, a life of its own. And people became more concerned with following all these new traditions and rituals and rules that they had lost the idea that going to church and believing in God was really about worshiping Jesus from the heart. And so Luther blew the whistle and he said, time out, we're going to get rid of all these traditions that are getting in the way, and we're just going to keep the few traditions that really help us worship Jesus from the heart. And so, yes, it's actually very appropriate that we would celebrate Reformation Sunday in the middle of this series. And I think that Martin Luther would have loved our slogan. Remember our slogan we'll put on the screen? I think Luther would have loved this slogan. Will you say it with me, please? Keeping it real. It's about the heart, not about playing the part. I think Luther would have loved that slogan. There is an online pastor's forum in which the pastors will support each other and encourage each other, and guys will sometimes post problems they're having, and guys can post ideas about how to handle that problem and just encourage that guy. And, uh, and then from time to time, guys will post crazy things that church members will say to them, right? And they're, they're quite amusing. I'm going to share someone with you because they're, they're, they're quite amusing. Um, but they're also kind of sad because, well, you see, not every church is as healthy as St. John. This is, a, this is a really healthy church where there's not a lot of people who cause problems. But as we know, that the, not every church is like that. And so we're going to pray for these churches, pray for these people, pray for these pastors, but we're still going to laugh at what they say, right? Uh, so here's the first one, and these are all absolutely real. I didn't make them up. Uh, the first one is, Pastor, this is a church member actually said this, Pastor, you talk about Jesus too much. When are you going to talk about other subjects? <laughs> a church member said this to a pastor. Um, pastor, why are you teaching the Bible to our youth? They'll never want to invite their friends. Because <laughs> that's what we do. I'm sorry, we do that. And, uh, okay, here's one. Uh, Pastor, the Holy Spirit cannot use you if you plan your sermons ahead of time. No, I think the Holy Spirit uses me. I think the Holy Spirit works through my, my study and my preparation and I mean, I'm always praying that, 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 that uh, the Holy Spirit would guide that process. Can you imagine if I didn't do that, if I didn't prepare my sermons ahead of time? I mean, how bad they would be. I mean, they're bad enough as it is, but can you imagine if I didn't plan my sermons ahead of time? Um, Pastor, <laughs> the music is too good. Church music shouldn't have that good a quality. Uh, so obviously, they were talking about our choir, right? 
And I'm just really, I was so inquired, fantastic job this morning. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, it's just, just wonderful. Um, Pastor, when are you going to fix the landscaping around the church? And, and, and the next one, just so you know, the next one, I submitted. This one actually, somebody actually said this to me several years ago. Pastor, the service was too long. Keep it under an hour. And uh, I was scarred for life. I was scarred for life. Uh, and then I don't know if this one, a pastor should not have a dog as a pet. Well, I don't even understand that one. I don't even, I don't even get that. And then for the last one, you have to understand, right, I, I wear a robe, obviously, for our traditional service, our 815 service. But our 11 o'clock service is like a modern contemporary service. I don't wear a robe for that one. I love the fact that here at St. John, we have both styles, that we worship in the traditional style and in a modern style. And as long as I'm here, we're, we're, we will always worship in the traditional style and we'll do it well. And that's, that's, some, uh, that's a commitment. But, uh, you know, there are some churches who only worship in a modern style. And there's, of course, there's churches that only worship in a traditional style. Well, there's this one guy, he, he submitted to this, this forum that he's, he's at a church where they only worship in a modern style. And so the only time he ever wears a robe and a stole and all that anymore is for funerals, right? For funerals. Otherwise, he, he just wears a, 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 you know, casual clothing. So one day, a church member came up to him and said, Pastor, I guess I'll have to die to ever see you in a robe again. <laughs> All right? So the next Sunday, the pastor wore a robe. He's still waiting for the guy to fulfill his end of the bargain. <laughs> All right, so a uh, little fun. Now, why do, so why do I tell you all these? Why do I share this with you? Because, see, all of these things, all of these people who said these things are coming to church with the wrong motivations, right? They're coming to church for the wrong reasons. They're more focused on the externals. They're more focused on what things look like or what they sound like or how things go or the way they're supposed to be in their person's own brain. And it's completely taken the focus for them off of what church is really about, right? And, and so, um, you know, Jesus once said something very poignant to some people who were like this. He said, you strain out a gnat and you swallow a camel, which is, you know, powerful. I mean, that's, wow, what an, what an image. You strain out a gnat, but you swallow a camel. On top of everything else that Jesus is, he's also a great poet, right? And what he meant was that, that, that these religious people he was talking to were so concerned with the minutia of religion and keeping the rules and keeping the traditions and doing everything the way it's supposed to be done and just really careful to, you know, that they had swallowed a camel, that they had completely forgotten what church and faith and religion and God is all about, which is worshiping God from the heart, which is coming to God, first of all, in repentance, saying, God, everything's not all right in here. God, I'm, 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 I'm broken. And, and there doesn't seem to be anything I can do about it. I keep coming back to pet sins. I, I, I have this terrible feeling that things are actually worse in here than I even understand. And I need your forgiveness because I can't fix it myself. That it starts with repentance, and then it goes to receiving his word and his sacraments. And through receiving his word and his sacraments, baptism and holy communion, we receive his forgiveness. We receive his unconditional love. We receive his promises and his blessings and the Holy Spirit and strength for daily living. And then thirdly, then we respond with praise and thanksgiving. But there's a fourth part. There's also a fourth part to worshiping Jesus from the heart. And the fourth part is what a lot of people want to kind of pretend is not there. A lot of people are happy with the, th the first three, right? Great. And then, you know, I'm going to go home. But the fourth one, the fourth part of worshiping Jesus from the heart is just as important as the, as the first three. And that as, is as believers 
we join together with Jesus on his mission to save the lost. That's what we mean. All of that together, that's what we mean when we say worshiping Jesus from the heart. And therefore, our slogan, keeping it real, it's all about the heart. It's not about playing the part. I want to share with you this morning three stories of church people. Three stories of church people. And our first story is about a bunch of church people who were, uh, they were, they were cons- very concerned about what they looked like to other people and what they looked like to God. They were very careful to keep all of the Ten Commandments. They were very careful to make sure that they gave 10% of their income to God, to the church. They were very concerned with how other people saw them, with their reputation. They really wanted other people to like them and respect them. And they figured that if other people, if all the people, especially the people in the church, liked and respected them, then God also must like and respect them. And Jesus just tore into these people. These people I'm talking about are the Pharisees and the teachers of the law in in the Bible. And uh, one day Jesus just had enough and he just criticized them brutally, right? Let's let's read it. We, We read it, Pastor Jeff read it a few minutes ago and he prepared us for how brutal it was, right? Let's read it again. We'll walk through it. And, uh, and I'm warning you, right, as we, we've heard it, so you kind of had an idea. This is not the warm, fuzzy Jesus, is it? Right? This is not the Ricky Bobby cute little baby Jesus, right? This is the righteous indignation Jesus. And so we're in Matthew chapter 23. If you brought your, your personal Bible from home, I want to invite you to open it up now to Matthew chapter 23. If you have a, a, a smartphone with a Bible app, punch up Matthew chapter 23. If you're at home watching on the live stream, we're so glad you're here. But you got no excuse. Grab your personal Bible, open up to Matthew chapter 23. And we're going to start at verse 23. So Matthew 23, 23. The righteous indignation, Jesus. And he starts off by saying, Woe to you. I can just imagine Jesus looking at you and saying, woe to you. He says, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, right? Mint, dill, cumin. You tithe, you give 10% of your income, but you've neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter, right? You don't give up the tradition of giving 10%, but Uh, You don't neglect the former, what's really important. He says, you blind guides, and then here it is. He says, you strain out a gnat, but you swallow a camel. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish. It's a metaphor, right? He's saying, you look good on the outside. But inside, they, you hypocrites, you're, you're, the Pharisees, you're full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, right? Repent and receive my forgiveness. I'll clean you, right? And then the outside will also be clean. Verse 27, woe to you, right? Three times he says it. Actually, he says it seven times. If you read the whole chapter, Matthew 23, he says it seven times. I just picked out the best three. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear, he's done with metaphors, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Wow, right? That's heavy. And this, this scripture makes us take a, a cold, hard look at ourselves, doesn't it? You know, in, in, in what way is my heart not in the right place? In, in what way would Jesus look at me and say, Mark, you're a whitewashed tomb. Mark, you look great on the outside. But, 
But inside, Mark, you're, you're full of dead man's bones and everything unclean. Mark, you need to repent. You need to receive my forgiveness and you need to let me wash you clean. Right? Because we've all had times when we have come to church with the wrong reasons, the wrong motivations to see and be seen, to, uh, to, to have people think well of us or to satisfy someone's expectations of us, right? Or to make business contacts or whatever. I don't know. And, and the scripture is challenging us, right? It's, it's um, um, he's, he's saying these things in, in real time to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. But Matthew, right, when he wrote them down, why did he write them down you know, for us? Right? Okay, uh, story of church people number two. Since today is Reformation Sunday, our next story will be about a group of church people at the time of Luther during the Reformation in the 16th century. See, in the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church and its leaders had, had come up with all these new traditions. And uh, one of them was, was worshiping the saints, Right, worshiping the saints. And you can kind of see how this got started. It probably came from a good place because, you know, people have role models and people would look up to people who had great faith. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing to have role models. You might know somebody who has great faith. Maybe it's a parent or an aunt or an uncle or a friend or a fellow church member. Maybe they know it. Maybe they don't even know that you really look up to them. And you say, wow, that person has great faith. They're a role model for me. I, I want, you know, I, I would like to grow to be more like that person. That's a good thing, right? God has placed people in our lives to be role models. But you can see how that would quickly get out of hand, right? You can see how someone, once they are maybe a religious leader, maybe a pastor, or a priest, or something like that, and, and you realize that people look up to you, and then you get a big head, right? And then you start thinking that, um, that, that uh, and then everybody starts thinking, well, we should lift these people up. We should, we should say that, uh, you know, lift them up as a role model and say, hey, everybody should be like this. And then, then everybody starts doing that, and then, right, the leaders need to go even farther to stay, you know, uh, as, as leaders and stay role models. And so what they ended up doing is they started taking vows. They would take vows of celibacy or vows of poverty or a myriad of other vows to, uh, to, to separate themselves from other people so the people would continue to look up to them. And it got so bad that even when these church leaders who everybody venerated, even after they died, people were then told to pray to them instead of praying to God directly. And by this time, things had got completely out of hand. And you can see how that completely took the focus away from Christ and worshiping him from the heart. And there were many other things like that during the after Reformation. We don't have time for all of them, but that's, that's one of these things that, that, that happened to this, this group of church people. All right, you ready for church, group of church people number three? All right. These are people who gather together around his word and his sacraments on a weekly basis. Not because they have to, but because they want to. People who come to church not to uh, see and be seen, but because they know they are broken inside and need his forgiveness need his word and sacraments to, uh, to, to, to rescue them and to give them his spirit and strength for daily living. People come to church not because they want to hang out with their friends and because the programs for the kids are really good, although those are good things, but because they want to join together with other believers on Jesus' mission to save the lost. People who understand that, that salvation comes from Christ alone. That this salvation is given to us by Jesus, by grace alone. That it is received by faith alone. These are the church people that we want to be. These are the church people that we are committed at St. John 
to be. These are the church people that our mission and vision at St. John lead us to be. For the glory of his name and for the rescuing and the establishment of our eternal life. In his name, amen. I invite the congregation to stand. And this morning, it's the fifth Sunday of um, the month. And as you know, uh, each time we have a fifth Sunday, which happens every quarter or so, uh, just a few times a year, we have community communion, emphasizing the fact that we're all, as brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, receiving the gifts of God. And through the simple bread and simple wine, we receive Christ's true body and blood, not in a symbolic way, but in an actual sacramental way, that Christ is truly there, a true presence for true forgiveness. If you did not get a packet of uh, your elements and you, the ushers have them in the back if you wanted to grab that, in just a moment we'll work through the opening liturgy and um, I'll consecrate the elements from up here. We'll sing a verse of our hymn, and then I'll come down in front and lead us in the actual reception of the elements. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. And for our sake, he died on the cross and rose from the dead and put to an end, uh, put to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way he took the cup after supper, and after giving it to them, he said, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the remission of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Amen.
invite you to take the bread. Take and eat the true body of Christ given you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And now the cup. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. this eating and drinking of Christ's true body and blood strengthen and preserve you until life everlasting. Depart in peace, knowing your sins are forgiven, and you are made free and strong to live forever. Amen. And receive the benediction of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I hope and pray that this worship service was a blessing to you. If you haven't already, please fill out the online connection card. Just go to our website, stjohn.tv, click on Worship Resources. We'd love to know that you worshiped with us today. And if you'd like to make a donation to the Lord's work at St. John, you can do that on our website also. Again, stjohn.tv, click on Give. 
Many of our families tithe. That is, they give 10% of their income. Would you please pray about what you can give to the work of the Lord here at St. John? Thank you very much, and God bless you and your family.